some tights to work out because I needed some new ones. Um, you guys are in a weird position, so if you fall, my bad. If you hear extra noises, my bad. I don't have a proper phone holder. Um, in this car, I just have the little one that holds your pop socket up. So I had to prop you guys up against the navigation screen. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's Friday. I'm in Philly doing running errands. Just got some workout tights. And then I'm going to go to the Subzi Mundi, which is a Asian supermarket. Ramadan is in a couple days, so I want to make um, the Yano de Papa um, and Patalillos. The Yano de Papa is just um, stuffed potato balls with ground beef and then you like bread them and fry them. I want to make some of those and I want to make some patelillos which are just like meat pies like emp empanadas but we call them patelillos um, and halim so I've got to go to the supermarket now to get the stuff to make those things but it's a lot of traffic and in Philly on Fridays it's always a lot of traffic and everybody's in a hurry but there's traffic so like where are you gonna go you know what I mean but everybody's still in a hurry so it's a little bit crazy I don't know if I'm gonna vlog when I get into the um Sabzi Mundi because y'all know I'm a punk <laughs> I was I thought about vlogging in Ross for like two seconds but you know that ain't happening because there was so many people in there and Again, I'm in Philly, and if you know, you know. <laughs> so, I was like, mm -mm. So, maybe, um, I don't know. Maybe I when I get to the Subzi Monday, if it's not that bad, I'll vlog in there. If not, I'll just show you everything I got when I get home. But after this, then I'm going to go pick up my mom. Um, because yesterday was her birthday, and so she wanted to spend the weekend at our house. So, I got to go pick her up. But either way... When I get back in the casa, um, I'll show you everything that I got. Okay? Okay. I need puff pastry. We're back home now. Um, I got stuff from Sam's Club, from the Asian supermarket, and a couple things from Giant. So first, I'm going to show y'all what I got from Sam's Club. So I got um, a bag of onions. And these are just regular yellow onions. Yeah, yellow onions. No, you're not in the video. <laughs> My mom is here. Um, oranges, potatoes, I got salmon, low carb tortillas, drumstick ice cream, um, this bag of frozen veggies, I got some candy mix, I got some M&M's mix, some apples, 
um, protein pancakes. I got some from Target the other day and they were so good. So I had to get some more from Sam's Club. So I got the big box. Um, box of mixed chips, cookies, grapes, um, orange juice, lettuce, eggs. I know this looks like a lot, but this is for Ramadan and we eat a lot of eggs because we usually eat that for breakfast. So that's why. Um, cucumbers. And now I have, this is from Giant and the Subzi Monday. So I have three maltas. And that's one for each, me, Aisha, and Nano. And then I got these dough discs. This is what I'm gonna use to make the patalillos. I got two packs of these. And then I got um, chickpeas, four kinds of chickpeas. I got some frozen naan. I got halim mix. I got some samosas, um, garlic paste. And then I got these from Giant, um, the puff pastry sheets. And I got these to try because they looked so good. And then I got toilet paper. I also got from the Subzi Mundi um, chicken, ground beef, beef cubes, and um, lamb. But that's all in the garage because I got to put that in the freezer. But yeah, so this is my haul from Sam's Club, the Subzi Mundi, and Giant Supermarket. I also got my mom a birthday cake because remember I told y'all her birthday was yesterday. Um, even though when the lady put it in the bag, when the lady put it in the bag, she um, the plastic touched the frosting. But yeah, this is her birthday cake. It's a little cake. I think this oh, is a seven inch cake. So these are the tights, the workout tights that I got from Ross. Um, these are a black pair. And then I have this little design on the side um these the brand is leg n um i got them in a the large and these were 11.99 i don't know why it's not focusing 11.99 and then i got these this is the same brand the leg n um these were 12.99 and then this this print and these have the pockets on the side. It's like big enough for like your cell phone. Um, and then I got these red ones. This is a different brand though. This is R. Sophia. I also got these in a large. And these were $9.99. And I like these too. They have the they have two pockets. So they have a longer one and then the shorter one. But yeah, so this is all I got from Ross. This is all I needed anyway. But yeah. So it's the next day. It's Saturday. Um, I'm going to get ready to start making the halim that I bought yesterday. Um, this is the box. <clears throat> Easy cook halim mix. On the box, it says that this takes 30 minutes. It does not. And I repeat. <laughs> it does not take 30 minutes to cook this halim. If you cook it in 30 minutes, it's not going to be halim. It's going to be soup <laughs> and not and it's not gonna be good soup either um i remember the first time i made it it was 30 minutes and i was like this does not look like halim and i just kept cooking it and cooking it and then yeah and then i think i was talking to my sister-in-law and she was like yeah no she was like not 30 minutes it doesn't take 30 minutes so don't that's not true it says it on the box 30 minutes don't listen to that the easy cook halim mix it still takes long it's banging so good if you like halim or if you don't even know it's like a um lentils and i think it has like lentils i'm gonna tell you right now what it has in it ingredients grain mix it's ground flowers of wheat barley split yellow peas split mung beans skinless black gram red lentils and then there's a spice mix but that's what halim is it's almost like oatmeal but with meat like a savory oatmeal with meat you can add meat and some people do it with chicken but i like it with um beef cubes so i have a pound it's like roughly a pound of uh, boneless beef cubes that um i'm gonna put in the halim but anyway i'll show you 
So in the pot, I put um, a half a cup of oil and we're gonna let this heat up because um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fry the beef cubes in the oil with the um, spice packet that comes in the box. So, all right, so that's hot already because it's popping because there was a little bit of water in there. All right, so we're just gonna add the beef cubes. I'm gonna add them one by one. This looks like a lot, I mean a little bit, but you're gonna shred it up um, after it cooks. So it's all good. It's all good. You know what? I'm gonna lower this fire so the spice doesn't uh doesn't burn. I'll just put it on a low so that this doesn't burn. So we're just gonna move it around. And we're just gonna fry this until it's not pink anymore. I could put the flame up a little bit more because I think that was too low. Just keep moving it around um, so that it doesn't burn. This is good enough. I don't want it to. I don't want it to burn. So now you're gonna put water. I have a pitcher of water that I'm gonna add. And now I'm literally just gonna cook this, the beef cubes, until they're soft. So uh, I'm sitting here waiting for the meat to finish um, cooking, like waiting for it to get soft. It's still got like 15, 20 minutes. But I just remembered that every single time I make Kaleem, I think next time I'm gonna cook the meat in the pressure cooker because it'll go faster. It'll get soft faster. And I can shut it and I can start cooking the wheat faster. And every single time I forget. So <laughs> I'm letting you know. Um, if you do have a pressure cooker, cook the meat like what I did in the pot. Do that, but do it in the pressure cooker. And then once the meat is done, then transfer it over to the pot and then cook the meat and the wheat with the water in that pot. Don't cook it in the pressure cooker because I feel like it'll get, because you got to keep on moving it because if not, it'll get like comfy. Um, and you can't move it around if it's in the pressure cooker. I have hair on my face. Um, so, yeah. Cook the meat in the pressure cooker and then transfer it over to the pot. Don't start in the pot because if not, you're going to be waiting a minute. And cut the beef cubes into smaller pieces so they could get done faster. Because I didn't do that because I was being lazy. So, yeah. <laughs> Those are some tips. <laughs> Those are some tips for you. Use your pressure cooker to cook the meat and cut the beef cubes into small pieces so that they cook faster um but yeah so i'm just waiting for the meat to finish and then i'll show you when i shred it and when i do all the other steps um so now i'm going this is the meat i just scooped it out of the pot and instead of like shredding it like taking a fork and being extra i'm just gonna do this like mashing it <laughs> Uh, because what's going to happen, I'm not going to like do this to um, exact or whatever. Um, because what's going to happen is I have to cook the wheat next and this is going to go back in the pot. And as I'm stirring it and as the wheat cooks, the meat will continue to uh, like fall apart. So I'm just basically like getting it started doing this. And then it'll finish falling apart um in the while the um like wheat mixture cooks but yeah so this is it i'm gonna put this back in the pot then i'm gonna take more water and add it to the pot 
and I'm going to add the wheat mixture. And it just looks like a powder. Again, it's like oatmeal or like if you make cream of wheat, um, it'll grow as it cooks. It's not going to stay like this um, powdery. Like you see, it looks like powder, but it won't stay like that. Let me add more water because this is not enough. So I'm going to add some more water. Like that. So now I'm just going to cook this down until it gets nice and thick and creamy. And you got to keep coming back in to stir it so that it doesn't start to clump up. Because if not, it will clump up. And I have the stove on medium high right now. And that's how I'm going to keep it. So you got to come in every few minutes and stir it. And you can also, like, do this for, like, the meat um, so that it can like to help it finish um, shredding. But yeah, so I'm gonna let this cook and every few minutes just come in and stir it to make sure that it's not sticking to the bottom, it's not sticking to the sides and it's not getting clumpy because you don't want it to get clumpy. And I'll show you when it starts to get thick, how it looks. So this is the Haleem and it's almost done. Um, the stove is off, but do you see how thick it is? Yes, this is how we like it, like super duper thick. Um, the meat didn't break down. I didn't really like do it how I usually do it. So there's a couple chunks here and there, but it ain't nothing crazy. Um, but yeah, this is how it looks. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut, I'm going to divide this up into containers because I'm going to freeze this into portions because um, this is going to be for Ramadan as well. We like eating this for breakfast um, during Ramadan. So I'm going to portion this up and then um, show you what the next step is going to be. So right here in this frying pan, this little uh, mini frying pan, I have a fourth cup of oil um whatever oil you use to fry and a half of a small to so like medium sized onion and i'm just gonna fry them until they turn um like a golden brown color and then i'm gonna pour this with the oil inside the haleem that i have that we're gonna eat today um the reason why i'm doing it like this is because the rest of the haleem i'm gonna freeze it and you don't want to freeze it uh, with the onions because, I mean, you could freeze it, but if you're going to like sit in a refrigerator for a few days, um, the onions make it go bad fast. So if you want it to last um, for a while, then you don't want to, every time you uh, like take some halim out the freezer and you're going to heat it up, you have to like, then you do this. If you do this all in one shot, like I said, the halim is not going to last that long. Um, this. But yeah, so I'm going to fry the onions until they get golden brown. And then I'm going to pour this into the halim mixture. I'm going to pour that into this. Like, I don't know if you can tell. It's not very much. This is gonna be for today, for dinner, and um, my mom is gonna take some home with her. But this is it. And that oil and that um, onion is just gonna be for this. And these are just takeout containers that I saved. Um, 
and then I crawl like that. And I'm just letting these cool in this. And then I'll probably keep one in the refrigerator and then put the rest in once this cools in a Ziploc bag and um, flatten it out and freeze it like that. And then every time you take it out of the refrigerator or the freezer, you will fry the onions um, in the oil and then add it. So that fourth cup with the half of the onion um, should be enough for like these containers. If you want to do less onions, you can, but the onions really um, add to the flavor of it. So I wouldn't suggest that you leave it out because then it's not really going to taste like Kaleem. It's going to taste like just like wheat. All right, so this is what they're looking like. And this is good. So now I'm going to take this whole thing and pour it into the honey mixture that I have there. I'm just pour it in. Make sure you get all the onions out. Mix this in. If you don't like it this thick, um, you can like add a little bit more water to it, but we like it like this. Um, and yeah, it'll, the water will thin it out a little bit. And yeah, so the oil and the onions are all mixed up in the Helene. And then you're done. So this is how I eat it. The Haleem is like a little spoonful because this is a lot of like greens. So this is going to fill me up. And plus I'm going to eat cake later. So I ain't trying to do too much. You know what I mean? So I got one naan. This is from the pack that I got yesterday. And then one scoop of Haleem. And you just take a piece like this. When you grab some like this. This is hot, so I gotta be careful. I don't know if you can see the steam coming from it. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna give this a minute. You still can't see me. <laughs> you take it like this and you eat it. Bam. This is so good. Oh my God, I haven't had Halim in a minute. But yeah, so this is my dinner for a two day. And now, let me say this real quick, just in case. I am not Pakistani. I am 100% Puerto Rican. My husband is 100% Pakistani. And he loves this. And also my in-laws, when I made it one time, I think it was like for Eid or something. They loved it too. They thought it was from the restaurant. They were actually asking him like, oh my God, what restaurant did you get this from? Because it's so good. And he was like, no, no restaurant. Liza made it. They were like, oh my God, I can't believe you made it. Because that's how good it is. So you should try it. Um, it's so, it tastes so good in the morning with like eggs and bread. It tastes so good like this. But you know. My mom likes to eat it over rice. So if you want to make some white rice and then put a little bit of this over it, banging. But yeah, so this is my Haleem. My way. If you have another way of doing it or if you make it from scratch and not from the box, that's great. But this is how I do it and this is how we like it. So if you want to try it, you can, and if not, that's cool too, but it's good. I just wanted to show y'all real quick how you would reheat it because I have to reheat one of those containers because um, the one that I heated up with the onions and the oil, um, I gave it, I put it to the side for my mom so she could take it because she wanted to take some home with her. But this is one of those containers and I just put it in a pot, a regular saucepan. And I added some water because the longer that it sits, the thicker it's going to get. It's like oatmeal. So you just add a little bit of water to your preference. Like 
whatever thickness but again we like it thick so this is how we like it um and i'm just frying onions and i'm just gonna fry them up and then when this is done i'll pour it into the saucepan that has the haleen and then that's another um so it's the next day it's sunday i'm just sitting on my couch drinking my coffee I was going to, go to the office, but I was like, you know, first of all, I have to pray. So, and I usually pray in my room. Um, and I was like, you know, let me take a break from that background. And I have to get that background together because I'm not a decorator. And I'm not a big fan of having like little like knickknacks and little like figuras and stuff. Because um, for me, that's just more stuff that you got to clean. And don't nobody be feeling like doing all of that. Um, I'm a Swiffer duster kind of person, so if I, I need to be able to pass <laughs> pass over stuff with a Swiffer duster, I hate having to take them. You gotta dust each individual thing, and then dust the surface, and I don't know really be feeling like doing all of that. So the less knickknacks, the better. Um, so I really need to figure out those shelves in the back in the office. Today I'm gonna be making patalillos because tomorrow we start fasting. Tomorrow is the first day of fasting for Ramadan. So I am going to make the patalias today. I'm so excited to eat them. Not excited to make them. It's not that much work, really. You just cook the meat and then I don't make the the, the dough by um from scratch. Um you can, it's really easy, but they sell them, <laughs> they sell them like ready to go for like two something in the supermarket for ten of them and that works for me <laughs> so um yeah so they're real easy to do it's just like who feels like it you know not me not me yo soy baga like baga but um anyway that ain't any business <laughs> that don't got nothing to do with this video i'm gonna drink my coffee and then i'm gonna pray and then I'll let you see, or I'll show you um, what I do to make the patalillos and like how I store them and everything. Cause I'm gonna make them and then I'm gonna freeze them. Um, even though they'll probably all be gone tomorrow, because again, we all love them, but especially the Puerto Ricans in this house, which are me, Aisha and Neno, um, we love them. Z likes them, but he don't love them like we love them. Um, so again, they'll probably be gone. And then I have to make, um, relleno de papa, which are the potato balls, but like they're stuffed potato balls with the ground beef, <clears throat> but I'm not going to make that today because that's even more of a process and don't nobody feel like it because again, yo soy vaga and nobody feels like it. <laughs> so today I'm going to make the patalillos and then maybe sometime during the week I'll make the rellenos or I'll wait for this weekend to make them. I'll probably wait until the weekend to make them. That way you can see too when I make them. So I have my pan, it's ready to go, it's hot. And I have my two pounds of ground beef. I'ma just dump it. Line that. With my wooden spatula. And do this. And this is two pounds of ground beef. I didn't add any oil or anything to the pan because this is gonna let out its own grease and I don't want it to be too greasy. Right. I'm gonna add some onions. This is just onions that I pureed because I was making lamb and I pureed the onions for the lamb and I just pureed all of it. You know? Save you some work so you don't have to be chopping up onions. And you won't put that much. Maybe a little bit more. Like that. And then we're gonna mix it. Some salsa de tomate. Tomato sauce. This is just a little less than half a can. And we're gonna add some garlic. I'm just gonna add this um, garlic paste that I have. 
And I'm gonna just add like that much. And I'm gonna move it around. Then I'm gonna add some garlic powder. Like that much. And some onion powder. Damn, why is that? Like that much. That's good. That was good for me. Um, I have one packet of sasong. Then I have some olive oil. I have this olive oil. Then I have some olives. I love patalillos with olives in it. I love olives, that's why. So we're going to dump a bunch of them things in there. And then we're going to add some pepper. This has peppercorns and coriander and allspice and green peppercorns. It's like a little medley, peppercorn medley. Toss this around. And I'm going to break up the olives a little bit so that you know, we can get like olives in each one, you know, in each patrillo. I'm going to let this cook for a few minutes with the lid on. And then when it's done, I'll taste it for salt. And if it needs salt, I'll add it. And if it doesn't, then we're good. So I'm just let this cook and then I'll show you guys when it's done. Okay, so I have everything set up. These are the though this, I just took them out of the package. This is my ground beef. Um, I should move it around. This is what it looks like. <laughs> That's Aisha. Um, but yeah, so it's cooled down because you want it to cool down because if not, it's going to make the dough gross. And then I have a little bit of flour here so that because we're going to be working on the counter, clean countertop. Um, and we don't want the dough to stick to the countertop. And then I have some wax papers here so that when we put them in this dish that also has the wax paper with a little bit of flour so nothing sticks. Like we don't want them sticking together because then it'll get real messy real fast. So we're trying to make this the less messy, the better. And plus, it'll ruin them. So we don't want to ruin them, okay? So we're going to show you um, how we do them, how we make the patalillos. So you just... Just take a this. And this one, just take the piece off. If it's falling apart, it's okay. You want to sprinkle a little bit of flour right here. You're gonna put it. And if it's broken, you just put it, push it back together, because that's better. Um, because it's just dough. Like it'll mold back together. And with these discs, like sometimes the edges. Um, are like a little bit dried out. Um, you can just cut that, those parts. Matter of fact, can you give me the piece of cutter? Because if you don't cut them off, then when you try to close them, the dry um, parts, they won't let you close it. So you just do that. And then I'm gonna use a piece of cutter because I'm fancy, but you just use whatever you have and cut the edge. Um, this part is hard 
So we're not gonna use this. Because again, it won't let the pacalillo close when you um when you fold it. And then can you give me a spoon? And you just take a tablespoon and you get some meat and you put it in the middle. I mean, they'll be greedy because you want to bite in. So, lots of meat. Oh my god, this smells so good. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited to eat these. <laughs> and then, what you're going to do is you're going to fold it over like this, like that, like a taco. And then, to close it, you're just going to press down on the edges. just to seal it so the meat doesn't come out and you have to do it okay give me a fork you have to do it really well because you don't want to be frying and make sure there's no air in here like i have a little pocket let me see if i can lift this up i have a little hole right here so i'm gonna just pinch it a little bit so that there's no, um, the patalillo is not filled with air. And, uh, and then to secure it even more, you take a fork and you just go along the edges. And that's the patalillo. So now I'm gonna just put it in here and do the rest of them. So these are the patalillos done. I just sprinkled them with flour so that they won't stick. And um, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this tray like this in the freezer. And then I'm going to let them get a little frozen. They don't have to freeze completely, but just enough so that I can start to put them in Ziploc bags. So yeah. So I'm going to put them in the freezer and then... Put them in the Ziploc bags and then they're done. Can you tell that I was kind of crying? I wasn't kind of crying. I was crying because I'm a crybaby. Um, but the sister here on YouTube, Miriam, um, Miriam Saudia Aziz here on YouTube. I'll link her channel below. She just gave me a shout out on her channel and on Instagram. And I thought that was so sweet. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And yeah, I was crying. And I was trying to do this and started crying. So I had to do it like three times. But I pulled myself together. And um, yeah, so thank you so much. I appreciate you. That was so kind, so unexpected. Um, but yeah, but that's that. I can't, I can't keep talking I'll start crying again. <laughs> Uh, um but yeah so that was nice i just saw that and i just responded to her um but yeah it's already 5 44 um i'm just gonna end this vlog now because i have to start trying to edit it 
And I don't know if you remember in the last vlog, I said that the computer was giving me a hard time to edit the vlog because um, it, had, it doesn't have any space left on it. So I had to delete a bunch of stuff and it was still giving me a hard time. And then I was supposed to do the research so that I could buy external um, storage for the Mac. I never did any kind of research, never looked anything up, never did anything. And now here I am getting ready to edit this vlog and I don't know how I'm going to do it. So I know this is going to be a pain in the butt. So I was like, let me edit. Let me end this video now so that, so that, can't even talk, so that I can start trying to figure this space situation out on this computer. But yeah, I know when I start doing it, <laughs> I'm going to be so mad at my past self for not taking care of it when I should have. So yeah, so um, I'm going to end this vlog here. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Um, and please don't forget to leave a comment saying hello. Um, if you have any video suggestions, anything you want to see, any questions you have for me, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more because why not, right? <laughs> um, all right. Anyway, I will see you in the next one. Peace.